Good morning, everybody. My name is Sebastian Schneider. I am the responsible product manager of the 7VU85. Welcome to our third session about the new member of our Zipotec 5 family, the high-speed busbar transfer device 7VU85. After the second session in June, we continue with the third session today, the dynamic testing of a high-speed busbar transfer system. With hardware in the loop, and we also want to show you the world's first test with software in the loop using our Zipotec Digital Twin connecting to Omicron release and test. But before we start the presentation, I would like to introduce Mr. Florian Fischer, an expert from Omicron. He is the product man manager responsible for the system-based testing solution, a really Zim test. Welcome, Florian. How are you? I'm fine. Thanks, Sebastian. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good afternoon, depending uh, where you are uh, located worldwide to this interested, uh, interesting webinar. Um, I'm very glad to be here. Thanks for the invitation again. And I think that will be a nice webinar today. Today, you are, you are going to show us how to test a high-speed bus bar transfer system with a dynamic test system. What is, what is the new thing? about these, uh, these high-speed bus bar transfer yeah. testing or motor testing uh, with realism test? We have a dynamic simulation in realism test. And since version 4.10, we also have the ability to test uh, the, this system or every uh, system of the Zipotec 5 family, even with a digital twin. Oh, and okay. that's something we want that's to show good. today at the end of the webinar. Uh, so first we do the test with the physical device and after that also with the digital twin. Okay, thank you, Florian. So, but now it's time to start the third session. I would like to give you a rough overview, a general uh, overview about a high-speed bus bar transfer system. In the first two sessions, I talk about a little bit more the application and the use cases and so on. And today we want to repeat it a little bit that you keep in mind what does it mean to have a high-speed bus bar transfer system. So come into the first slide. And the first slide shows you the advantages of these uh, 7VU85. So that means we are using the existing hardware and firmware of the Zipotec 5 platform, and we added the new high-speed bus bar transfer uh, device function in, um, to, to that platform. So that means the HSBT system support multiple, multiple breaker application up to 20 circuit breakers. We have a flexible load shedding functionality. With the 9.60, we support the ultra fast transfer times of approximately 10 milliseconds for the fast mode. Uh, we have the possibility to add protection functions uh, to the HSPT system. And on the other side, we have the modular design. Uh, we can customize the configuration. We have, we support a lot of applications, and in the end, it reduced wiring. Um, we have the different simulation modes, um, simultaneous, sequential, parallel switching, everything is possible. So, and of course, we have also predefined application templates, which fits to the most of the applications in, in, in the industry world. So what does it mean? Yeah, the HSPT system is faster. That means uh, we have a faster transfer across the whole factory. Uh, we have a higher success rate to achieve uh, a transfer by the real-time fast mode. And we have these so-called high-speed um, binary outputs where we reach a fast um, yeah, closing time of less than one milliseconds. Easier. Easier means easier in operation, easier in commissioning, easier in, um, in, in integrating all these functionality into one device. So that means there is no need to have different devices. Uh, so you can support here with one device uh, yeah, multiple applications uh, and also multiple feeder applications. And in the end, of course, um, we use the well-established uh, Zipotec 5 platform here. Uh, that means we are safe and reliable on the 
yeah, hardware design and also on the Zipotec 5 platform. And of course, the HSBT system is comply according the ANSI C5041. Where we need uh, such a high-speed bus part transfer system, uh, this is usually used in power plants, petrochemical industries, pharmaceutical industries, hospital, data center, or semiconductor manufacturing. So they're always there where we have a continuous or where we have the case of a continuous power supply. For example, in a nuclear power plant, after we shut down uh, the, the turbine, we need uh, to distinguish that we have the cooling pumps in operation after we do not get any, any voltage supply from the main infill. So why we talk about fast and different modes and uh, different transfer types. So the device is supporting the sequential transfer. That means um, break before make, the simultaneous transfer. That means um, make before break, or the power lane transfer where we have a so-called synchro check functionality behind that. That means both breakers are in for a small time and without any, any uh, voltage dip on the motor bus. So, and therefore, we have different modes uh, in our, in our uh, HSPT functionality implemented, the fast mode, the real-time fast mode, the in-phase mode, or on the other hand, uh, and this is more a backup transfer, like an ATS system is working, the residual mode and the long-time mode. And when we talk about fast transfer, we always talk about the fast mode, the real-time fast mode, and the in-phase mode. And all these switching types are selected and calculated automatically by the device. So there is no need to, to uh, make a selection or to, to give a given command how the device is doing these transfers. So that means in the end, the device is checking the voltage on the motor bus, is checking the voltage um, on, the, on the incomer and also using the current information to block and uh, the, the, the HPT function in case of an internal fault. So here is a rough overview about the high-speed bus bar transfer function. So that means the high-speed bus bar transfer function is a function group which can instantiate it from the library in your project, um, in your device project. And you see the high-speed bus bar transfer function is supporting a ready and unreadiness check, and multiple, we have the multiple sensitive start types, for example, electrical fault or non-electrical fault, CB invert and open start, that means if the circuit breaker is open uh, unexpectedly, we have an under voltage start condition, we have an under frequency start condition, we have a manual start which is used, for example, after recovering uh, the, the main infit, we will switch back or we want to start uh, the HSPT system, the transfer, um, for example, for maintenance or so on. Uh, and then we have some additional start criteria for the simultaneous and the sequential. And this additional start criteria can be used, for example, uh, together with a simple yeah, reverse power functionality. So then we have the reliable blocking logic implemented. That means there are some cases, and we want to show these cases during the dynamic testing today, um, that we do not want to transfer in case of a motor is slowing down or we have a fault on the motor bus or we have, a, we have other conditions like a voltage dip in the grid or so on. During that conditions, we do not want to transfer and therefore we need reliable blocking functions. Then we have the set up the transfer sequence. You will see that later on in my slides uh, where we go through the Dixie settings, of course. And uh, the set up a transfer sequence is split in the sequential, break before make, simultaneous, make before break, and parallel where both breakers are in. So, and in the end, of course, the different fast and safe algorithm for closing the breaker. And here, of course, we have the fast mode, real-time fast mode, in-phase mode, residual voltage mode, long-time mode, and the Simco check is also available in the device. So then we can talk about the benefits. I told you 
that we have different benefits uh, due to the platform. Um, and we have here the new generation is based on the Zipotec 5 platform um, with the different modes. We have a great cost saving potential because the device is flexible and scalable. Um, we prevent, of course, with the HSBT system motors for large impact current and impact torque during the transfer. Uh, we have the yeah, better performance uh, with the ultra fast switching times up to 10 milliseconds. Uh, we have the Cipotec 5 architecture, which offers, of course, the full flexibility in hard and software. And
another guy on line. Yep. Again, sorry for the chat interruption, so we have some technical issues here yeah, in the studio, so that means everything is live, so and sometimes the, the, the technique is not working than we expected. For the 7 VU, uh, we do a lot of system testing in advance. Yeah, we have the three. Can... Hello, hello. Test. Hello. Hallo, eins, zwei, drei, wie ist der Ton? Nein, nicht besser. Nur ein Mix. Mix ein Mikro? Nee. Ein Dingerteil. Ja? Yeah, man, this is a good costume with the whole shit in it. Nice to...
Jetzt. Alles da? Ja, jetzt wird noch eine Sekunde. Ja. Genau. So, wir, 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 wir rekorden jetzt wieder weiter und dann kann man das jetzt hier soweit recording läuft wieder. Slides sind äh, noch nicht da. Ja. Umschalten. Die. Von da, von der Folie von oben an. Ja, ja. Okay, passt das schon? Ja. Ja. So. Kann ich starten? Okay. Back again. So. Was a little bit more uh, problematic to restart the system. Um, sorry for it. I hope you have time to grab a coffee uh, to use this small break. <laughs> um, okay, then we go again to that slide, uh, through that slide about the benefits. Uh, we talk about the, the better performance. Um, we talk about as well the unified platform. Uh, we have the standardized interfaces and communication protocols, of course. Uh, we have an easy configuration with Dixie 5, uh, also for complex application. You will see that later on in my slides when we go through the Dixie application and so on. Uh, and of course, the CPOTEC 5 platform is uh, has a future-proof design uh, for cybersecurity. That means you get always the latest um, recommendations and, 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 and fixes, um, the latest generation of hardware. Uh, and of course, um, yeah, the Zipotec 5 platform is um, yeah, pro ready for process-based applications. So how the um, HSPT concept is working also for complex applications. Here you see uh, that on the, on the left side that uh, for, yeah, for, uh, yeah, for in-comma application with one TICB, uh, or sexualized bus bar, we need different devices um, to cover here the whole application. So you can count here up to six, seven view uh, 683 uh, to cover here the whole application. And in between we need interlockings and we need some releases and so on um, to cover here the whole applications. With the seven view 85 here on the right side, you can see we can cover the whole application in, with only one device, and we do that with the function group or function transfer directions. What does it mean, fun, fun, transfer directions? That means you, as user, implement or integrate here different transfer directions, for example, from breaker one to breaker two and so on. If we have a look on the concept here, you will see for a simple two, bre uh, two in-comma applications, that means that this is a simple three-breaker application, uh, two in-comma and one TICB, we will have here different transfer directions. And due to that application, we can have up to six transfer directions, and each transfer direction can be set it here into, um, yeah, into the um, fu function transfer directions, that means, for example, if you want to transfer from in comma one to in comma two, or from in comma one to bus bar one, or bus bar two, and so on. That means you define in Dixie which transfer directions you want to use. And you can start due to the, um, the readiness check, uh, the HSPT system can start these transfer direction automatically. How does it look like in Dixie? So in Dixie, you have the function group concept. Uh, you see for each circuit breaker, we have to add from the library a function group circuit breaker. Here we have two circuit breaker and one circuit breaker. Uh, it's called circuit breaker without current, which is used for the TICB. And then we implement here uh, also from the library, the function group HSPT, high speed bus bar transfer system, which contains the a general block, the start block, and the switching types, and of course the added transfer direction. In our case, for a three break application, we have six transfer directions. And then you can see we have some general settings here um, 
the general settings for the uh, maximum duration time, manual start, operation time, readiness check, the simultaneous transfer uh, sequence, and the parallel rating sequence. These are the standard uh, parameter which needs to be set for your HSBT application. When we come to the next uh, to the next uh, function, this is the start condition here, and uh, for the start condition we have the manual start, the fault start, and um, the um, yeah fault detection. Then we have the under voltage start, uh, the under frequency start, and the CB inhibit inhibit and open start, and all these starts type can be enabled or disabled separately as you like. On the next slide, you, we see here the application example for the switching types. So the switching types are the, the switching type modes for the fast mode, real-time fast mode, in-phase mode, residual voltage mode, and long-time mode. And each switching type can be set it separately and all scores can be activated separately like a simple overcurrent stage. So how the application works together. Here we have a yeah, little bit cloudy picture with some, with some errors here. But you see here, in each circuit breaker, we have the so-called HSPT interface, which is the interface to the function group, to the function himself. And in the HSPT function group himself, we have transfer directions. And you see here the transfer directions from in comma one to in comma two, or from busbar one to in comma two. You can activate this function. You can say it yes or no or test. You can also say if this transfer direction is only used for manual mode. That means for um, for re switching or for yeah for for reconfiguration after the fault is clear. And then you can say, okay, which voltage transformer should be used uh, to measure here the voltage from the bus one or the bus two in case of a three breaker application here. And then of course we have also the possibility for each transfer direction to add here the flexible load shedding functionality. That means load shedding is used normally to uh, switch off motors or load in the beginning of the transfer or shortly before the transfer will happen. And this can be also set very flexible. So, and here we have the um, application example for in Dixie for the transfer routing, and this is made in a simple table. And make, and this is, of course, a very useful um, matrix here to say which circuit breaker needs to be closed, which circuit breaker needs to be open, and of course, which circuit breaker needs to be in or, or switched on or off, that this transfer direction is ready. And this is made here in the transfer routing. And um, there is another, another um, um, view where we can set also transfer groups. And in, inside this transfer groups, we can say priority um, for the transfer directions. That means in the end, we can say, okay, we want to have normally switch from breaker one to breaker two, but if this transfer direction is not ready, um, the device should select the next transfer direction, which is, uh, which is ready, and this can be set at in different priorities so that you get you, especially for bigger and more complex applications, the full flexibility um, to um, offer here um, um, a fast and reliable transfer. So then we have the typical applications. Um, so here we have three application templates and I think these three application templates cover the most of the applications. Uh, here in, in all the cases, we have a single bus bar application. We have a two breaker application. We have a three breaker application, two income and one sectionalized, um, sectionalized uh, bus bar. And uh, on the right side, we have the application template three. Uh, with, uh, with three incomers, with the 9.60, uh, we provide now two application templates more. That means in total we have five application templates, one for double bus bar and one for three, uh, well, for five breakers. That means three incomers and two sectionalized bus bar. So this is also supported now with the 9.60 version. So, and if you start 
in Dixie, um, you type in your product code or your short code after you select the, the short code in the code in the in the Zipotec 5 configurator. Then uh, you have also the possibility to select your device or start directly in Dixie by selecting the hardware. And then you find, of course, after you select the hardware, the application templates here. We have the 9.50 where we have the three, 9.60 supports then five application templates. So, and then we come to the application um, two in karma and one sectionalized single bus bar. And this is the application what we want to discuss and test today together with Florian. And here for this special application, we need three circuit breaker. It could be two circuit breaker, normal circuit breaker, and one circuit breaker without current. The advantage is that we do not need to measure the current here for the sectionalized CB. So that means we have here the possibility for uh, to reduce uh, the current inputs on the device. So uh, we need a two time uh, the three phase current input for the incomer. So this is uh, an additional criteria to block the HSPT functionality. Then we have um, two times three phase voltage because we measured on both bus bars the voltage three phase. Um, and on the incomer, we, we measured two times uh, um, yeah, a single phase voltage, phase to phase voltage. Uh, which is enough uh, to have the information, the voltage is there and uh, the voltage is on the on the acceptable level and so on. That means all these informations are necessary to um, get a readiness uh, check um, and that the transfer is working. So, and of course, we can also use uh, the internal protection functions. That means we can also add to the HSPT system uh, protection functions. In our case, we have an, uh, we have integrated here a function group voltage current three phase, and in this function group, we run an overcurrent function and um, a frequency functionality. So this offers the advantage that we have an internal start type so that there is no need that we have an external start condition, for example, which is normally coming from a uh, protection system. Uh, we are in a binary input, so this is also possible. We can start these or we can trigger the, the transfer by an external signal, uh, but also we can add here the, the protection functions to, uh, to the device itself, and therefore we are a little bit faster, so that means we do not lose time and um, there is no, uh, no risk uh, for broken wire, for example. And <clears throat> yeah, we can also add, as I said, uh, as I told before, the transfer directions. These, all these transfer directions are free, new, free definable. And uh, here we have this application. And um, so also, as I told to you, we have the possibility for a manual that we will show it later on. So that means now we have a fault on the first incomer and we want to transfer from the first incomer to the second incomer. So that means here we have to close here the breaker two and by transferring, um, by opening the breaker one and to closing the breaker two. So how we did that and how we checked that, we checked that by this table. So that means uh, for the first transfer direction, we have to check, uh, we have to open the breaker one, we have to close the breaker two. And on the right side, we have to check if this tie CB is closed. If the tie CB is not closed in that case, then this transfer direction is not ready. So, and we can test this, of course, we can use, uh, for example, the Omicron state sequencer for it to test this and to make a simple test if this application is working and this transfer is working. Therefore, you have to add um, three different stages. Um, by using bus bar voltage, uh, the current on the incomer, the current on the, uh, the voltage on the second incomer, and also the current on the second incomer. And therefore, you can test a simple transfer. Uh, but it is not dynamic. So that means we can simulate a motor slowing down or we have a fault and the voltage is going down and so on. That means we have no possibility to test the different mode, for example, the fast mode, the real-time fast mode, 
to show that the device is using the different switching, switching modes and switching types. This is only a static test, and here we have some limitations with the static, um, yeah, with the static test system. And especially when we have a look here on the switching of a motor load or switching off of a motor load, so you see the dynamic. Here we see this the circle diagram or the this, this snail here. Um, and you see the, the green arrow here um, is the alternative voltage and, uh, and the red one is the residual voltage here. And you see, the uh, longer it has happened, that means the fault will occur. We open the breaker, the voltage gets slower, or it gets, gets um, lower and lower. That means the voltage is decreasing, the frequency is decreasing, the phase angle gets bigger and bigger. And of course, such a behavior needs to be um, simulated dynamically. And this is only possible with a yeah, simulation software, for example, uh, EMTP or so on, or you use, for example, here, really sim test from Omicron, because really sim test is also offering a dynamic behavior, a dynamic simulation. And why we need that to simulate that uh, in a, in a, on a dynamical way? You see here the different areas for switching, for the switching modes. So that means in the first part of these of this circle diagram, we can switch from fast mode. The, the second part, um, which is the yeah, light blue one part, this is the real-time fast mode. And uh, the green part here is the in-phase mode. And of course, we sometimes we are out of the limit, of the safety limit. And this is the unsecure uh, area where we need to block um, the HSBT system. So that means the HSBT system have to wait until they give the close command. So, and in the end, if the voltage is too, too low, um, then under 80%, for example, then we need to wait longer and we need to use the residual voltage mode. And after the voltage is, is um, under 30%, then we can switch off. Why we need to wait? Because the um, mechanical torque and also the impact current on the motors is during that time too high. That means if the voltage is too low, the motor will not accelerate anymore. And the impact torque uh, for the motor is too high. And especially for the power supply, we get too many transients in this power supply for the whole power plant or for the whole application. So and therefore we need these different modes and we always want to switch in a very fast way. That means normally in a fast mode or real-time fast mode. And this of course needs to test. So, and here we have the full picture um, of, the, of the different modes over the time. So you see here on the x-axis the cycle and on the, on the y-axis uh, the phase angle and the voltage and here you see the influences. So that means we have different areas where we can switch fast mode, real-time fast mode or in phase mode. And if the voltage is under the 30%, then we can start the residual mode or the long time mode. Uh, and this is normally like a traditional ATS is working. So that means that a traditional automatic transfer system is not working in fast mode. It's always working in this long time and residual mode. And this normally takes seconds. It depends on the application. Yeah. So, and now I want to hand over to Florian um, for the introduction into the really sim test. Welcome on stage, back on stage, Florian. Back on that's, stage, thank that's, you, that's your part. Yes, I thought maybe it's uh, quite good to have a, a very brief introduction to really sim test. Uh, Sebastian already mentioned a state sequencer, that's a one module of our software re uh, test universe. That's, I think, um, maybe well known from all the listeners. Relay SimTest is a second uh, software that we use to yeah, inject analog values, current voltages with a CMC test set. Um, but Relay SimTest in, is somehow special because we have their uh, dynamic simulation. It's a simulation tool and we do a um, yeah, transient calculation of an electrical power system. Therefore, I want to give you a few uh, a short introduction. 
So what is really a test? Really a test in a nutshell, more or less. Uh, you see the focus there is not on the signal relay, but it's on the power grid. So you see that on that uh, right-hand part uh, on the slide with the infeed, a bus bar, a line, a load. So we simulate really the components of an electrical power grid. And then we simulate events on that power grid. So that could be that there is a fault incident. It could be that the load is changing. Uh, the infeed is maybe changing. There could be different other events, a circuit breaker opens or closes or even fails. So real sim test is first of all a transient power system simulation software. Uh, we do this simulation independent of the IED type or the overall system complexity. So uh, we don't care about if that's now a uh, CPROTEC 4 or a CPROTEC 5 device or if it's now this 7VU or a distance protection relay, whatever, because we want to test the overall protection system. For example, in, in that case, if the line is protected with an overcurrent protection function, if this uh, protection relay is working properly. So we can reveal with this uh, software simulation errors in design. So in the overall protection design, uh, if there are uh, errors in the logic or maybe also in the communication between different protection devices. So overall, we want to ensure that the protection system does its job. So we do not care about single parameters of a, a protection device. We want to see that the overall system is working. Yeah, we call that a system-based testing approach. Um, what we do with Test universe is settings-based uh, testing approach. I want to show the yeah, quickly the, the steps you need to do in realism test. We always start with modeling the power system, as you see on the right-hand side of the slide. Then we create test cases, as I have already mentioned. So maybe insert an, an fault incident or whatever. Then we run a test and measure back with our CMC devices how the protection device is operating. And at the end, we can assess this, these results and uh, print out a, a, a report. And that's quite new with version 4.10 of Relation Test. We now also have the possibility to interact with the CProtect Digital Twin. We call that now power inside of relay sim test. And that's also something I want to show at the end of this webinar. Yeah, if you look at the overall protection testing context, you see relay sim test alone uh, can be used, but of course it's much better to combine both test approaches, the settings-based test approach from test universe with the system-based test approach of relay sim test. And this, in combination together, gives this puzzle. We call that that's our protection testing puzzle. Yeah, what are the key features of relay sim test? Uh, I've already mentioned that we have a transient power system simulation, so we really calculate the currents, the voltages of the system. We can control not just a single CMC, but even more CMCs. Uh, either located all CMCs together or uh, a distributed system where you have maybe a line application and you want to inject from the different terminals of the line. And we have a feature that's called the iterative closed loop feature. That's also something I want to show you today. Uh, we have the ability to react on the um, protection relay behavior and we can open or close circuit breakers and adapting uh, our power system simulation according to the behavior of the relay. And we do that not closed loop in real time, but we do that with an iterative approach. Yeah, which applications can be tested with realism test? There are uh, quite a few examples. Uh, for example, it can be used in the transmission area to test auto reclosing. We can simulate series compensated lines. 
three or even uh, more terminal lines. We could simulate parallel lines with mutual coupling, so the influence of two lines together. We could simulate teleprotection schemes, line differential protection schemes, uh, power system or out of step uh, functionalities. We have an extension box for the CMC to be able to also inject traveling waves or to test the traveling, traveling wave functionality. Uh, we can simulate phase shifter transformers in a substation area. We could simulate bus bar protection systems, transformer differential protection systems. We can simulate different kinds of uh, networks, so insulated, compensated networks. Um, we could have breaker and a half schemes. Uh, Teleprotect, we can combine now different application areas. So that means transmission uh, and auto reclosing. So teleprotection with auto reclosing. Uh, we could have a differential protection system with a transformer in between. In the field of a distribution area, we could simulate um, auto uh, recloser sequences. And in the industry application area, we have the possibility to simulate even motors. Okay, that's it. Then I now want to switch to this example, which I have prepared. So maybe a few words about the test setup, if we can show that. Uh, we have here our CMCs. We have two CMCs for 30s. Uh, we have them wired to the protection device. So there is our physical device, uh, 7VU85. And I have connected these both uh, CMCs via this Ethernet cable on Ethernet port 2. That's quite important. And I can synchronize them when I have only two CMCs with uh, this Ethernet cable. Okay, I switch on the devices. I also have a look at the relay display. Okay, the relay is powered on. And now uh, I have started relay symptoms and I have already prepared quite a few test cases. First of all, when you start relay sim test, you see this gray area. In this gray area, you have more or less the workflow, what needs to be done step by step to execute a test shot or a test case. So the main focus on, of relay sim test is the overall power system. Sebastian already introduced uh, this application. So I simulated there two bus bars with a circuit breaker in between and two incomers. So here I have in feed one and in feed two. You see in this, yeah, we call that system under test. We have the possibility to simulate different kind of elements. So we have here different models of transformer, auto transforming, auto transformer, two and three winding transformers. You can simulate lines, bus bars, loads, in feeds, and also there, the induction motor. I have you used quite a few elements, and here in the middle, I have my uh, device under test. That's the 7VU. And this device is now connected to different CTs and VTs. So we have here, uh, I used a one phase VT for the both incoming lines then a three-phase CT, CT1 and CT2. And we have from the bus bus a three-phase VT. All these analog values are now connected and also the circuit breakers to the device. We have also the possibility to simulate the auxiliary contacts of each circuit breaker. So I have activated this here. And yeah, I have there quite a few motors to simulate this dynamic behavior. Okay, that's it. Uh, the first part, the creation of the power system. Um, 
Maybe also nice to know I added there a simulated IED because I want to simulate a manual start of the transfer and therefore I use a binary contact. So all I need to do there in the system under test is now to map all the analog values, the binary contacts, so the binary inputs and outputs of the relay. When I am done with that, uh, we can go one step further to the test set configuration. You see, I use two CMCs, the two blue boxes. Uh, each is a CMC 430. And what I did there, I used this option local sync. That means I synchronized them locally. That's uh, what I have mentioned with the Ethernet cable, which I connected uh, between both CMCs on Ethernet port 2. Then one CMC is the grandmaster clock, the other one is its slave, and you see now they are time synced. Of course, I also need to do the mapping there, so I connect the voltages, the current outputs, also the binary contacts, the inputs and the outputs I have used for this test. I do this for both CMCs. And then I can move on to the test cases. So that's a quite important part there. Now I have to think about, okay, which realistic test cases do I want to simulate uh, to check if the relay is operating correctly. And these kind of tests cannot only be done in the laboratory, so it, they can be used over the, all, the overall life cycle of a protection device or a protection system. So for example, uh, if you are in a very, very early engineering stage, you think about the settings of the relay, uh, you do the, the engineering, the, the setup in Dixie, and then you wanna see if that uh, correct or not what I did, you can start to simulate different test cases uh, already in the laboratory and then use or reuse these test cases later on in a substation when the commissioning was done or even during a stage before it during uh, the factory acceptance test. Okay, I have prepared there quite a few test cases. I will not show all of these test cases, just uh, a few. So one test case would be, for example, here, uh, motor is slowing down. So I open this test case. Relay, okay, it's working. And you see here, uh, the main focus is now, of course, the power system, but also you see the time axis and the time signals uh, of all the connected CTs and VTs. And you see that this is really a transient simulation or an, and a transient calculation. So if I zoom in a little bit, you see in that test case, what uh, did I do? Therefore, I need to go to the power system. Um, in the first, yeah, 5.5 seconds, the system is operating in normal condition. And after that, I inserted a circuit breaker event. So you can do this um, if you click on this circuit breaker, and then you can add a breaker event to the timeline there. And then you see, okay, circuit breaker one will trip at 5.5 seconds. So what do we do in our simulation then? We open this circuit breaker. And you see this motor here is now not connected to an infeed anymore. And what will happen? Of course, the speed of the motor slows down. So if I zoom out a little bit, um, the torque and also the motor torque and the load torque is slowing down. And what happens with our voltages and currents? You see here the, the voltage of the incomer one stays stable. That's the voltage here. 
measured here. The same uh, for voltage two, it also stays stable, that's this voltage. But then the voltage measured on the different bus bars, on bus bar one and bus bar two, uh, decreases. And the current, the three phase current on bus bar, uh, on, on in comma one, sorry, on in comma one is zero and also the CT, uh, the current on CT2 is zero all the time because this circuit breaker was already opened there. Okay, so that would be one test case. Yeah, we wanna see what happens with the system if we lose the motor, will be there some kind of a transfer or will there happen anything? Um, we can just check that. Therefore, I first need to activate the auxiliary DC output of the CMC for simulating my binary inputs of the relay. I need a, a DC power supply and we have that already integrated in the CMC. So I use the AUX DC supply from uh, CMC one. I turn on it. Okay, that's fine. And then I just start the execution of the test case. And you see now the signals are getting calculated. Then uh, the signals are uploaded to the CMC. And then in the third step, we are injecting the signals to the device. We simulate overall 14.5 seconds, so quite a long duration. Now the test is finished and we measure back all the signals of the uh, device to via the CMC. And we can now have a look to the binary signals and we see, okay, nothing happened. That's okay. We didn't expect that something will happen there. Uh, I will show another test case where there should happen something. And uh, therefore, I want to see that the device is able to do a switching in the fast mode. So I will open this test case. And you see, I use these uh, simulated binary contacts, so at 5.5 .5 seconds, I say, okay, I want to see a manual switching. So I start the, the switching algorithm. So here you see the overall sequence with nine seconds. And what I could do there, I have created three test steps. I varied the, the load percentage. So from 100% load to 50% to 10%. So in the Relay Sim Test, I always have the possibility to vary parameters. Yeah, that's something we can do there with this, yeah, we call it the magic cube. You have here the possibility in that case to uh, vary the load. You could also choose another parameter, for example, the infeed. You could also uh, change the phase angle of the infeeds or the percentage of the infeed. And then all the test shots are created automatically. Okay, so let's start this test case. So you see again, the signals are calculated. They are then injected to the CMC and then to the device. Okay, in that case, 
hours and nothing happened. That shouldn't be the case. Maybe we try another test case. The display still on, yes. Okay, that's a little bit strange. Um, Let's jump to another test case where we want to test uh, what happens if somebody, if the circuit breaker opens inadvertently. So what I did there is I also used uh, circuit breaker event, I open this circuit breaker one at six seconds. So before the circuit breaker is closed. And after that, we open the circuit breaker and we will see what happens. Okay, now I don't know why we I do not get uh, some response of the relay. Yes, I used 110 volts. That should be okay. The CMCs are in sync. Um, let's insert a new test case. So um, I use a simulation test case now, and I wanna see what happens when there is a fault on an incoming line. So what I do is, first of all, I choose a simulation duration of maybe 10 seconds. Then, This first circuit breaker is closed. CB3 is also closed and circuit breaker two is open. So what will happen if I add a fault there? So I just insert a, a fault event. Okay. Need to, to reset the relay first that you can see the display. Then I insert, in that case, a one-phase fault. We could also choose a, a three-phase fault. I could change the inception angle, um, and also if there is a res resistance between uh, the three-phase fault. Maybe let's simulate not, not all motors. I open there a few. Okay, and the fault takes place, let's say, at five seconds. We're calculating the signals, and then I will simulate these. You see here the short circuit current, yeah? this dynamic calculation and we will see what happens. Yeah.
Okay, unfortunately, there seems to be something wrong. Uh, we, we tested it already in the morning, everything went fine. Uh, I don't know at the moment why uh, we have this problem now, but it doesn't matter because uh, in a second step, uh, I wanna show you that I do not need this, uh, all this hardware and all this wirings with this uh, lot of cables there. What I wanna do now is I power off all the devices and I will do the exactly the same tests now with the C-Protect Digital Twin. Maybe uh, the issue comes from that the circuit breaker one is not, uh, is not closed. So I saw, yeah, I saw the that the circuit simulation breaker. Simulation of circuit breaker one maybe yeah. is wrong. Um, yeah, yeah therefore, th that could be, um, but therefore we need to check all the wiring. So I think because time is running, uh, the, pr the overall principle should be clear what we can do with a real SIM test and how to test such a system. So you set up your power system, you define test cases, and then you inject the calculated signals to the relay, measure back the response of the relay, and interact with this iterative closed loop to uh, adapt the power system calculation. So what I wanna do now is I switch off the device and also the CMCs. So you see the display now is dark, the relay is not working anymore. And I switch to another file. So that's exactly the same file now that was just copied. But what I do now is I use the digital twin. And with the realism test 4.20, we introduced there this digital twin connection. So I just insert this digital twin connection to the power system. And then you see the tested configuration gets minimized. Maybe you have not seen that. Focus on this area. So the CMCs disappear whenever I activate the digital twin connection. And that's now the button to switch between the physical world and the virtual world in real SM test. So as I have told you, just use exactly the same uh, test file, insert this digital twin connection, and then you can run all the tests you have prepared with the C-Protect digital twin. I will show step-by-step step how that works. So I inserted this digital twin connection, the hardware disappears, and I can start with my test cases um, as I'm used to. So I can also simulate different cases there. And when I press the play button, then I get some information what I need to do on Siemens side to prepare the digital twin. So first of all, I need to log in to the digital twin I have done that already. So you see there my copy of the physical device, my, my firmware emulation is running there in, in the cloud. Uh, it looks exactly the same as the physical device, as you see here. And uh, I need to upload a so-called state uh, sequence XML file. So that's the file that I need to upload to the cloud so that I can do the mapping between the real test signals and the digital twin signals. Uh, so this file is called API reference file. Please do not rename this file name. Uh, it must be API reference file. Then I save that and then uh, in the digital twin I can API reference file there, I have done that already, and then I can go to the routing matrix. And in the routing matrix, I do now the mapping between the generated signals of real SIM test and 
the uh, signals of the digital twin. Before that, I forgot that, of course, I need the .sim file of this physical device. So when I go to Dixie, export uh, this project or this uh, relay as a .sim, and I uh, import this .sim file then here uh, in the cloud. That's down there, the 7VU85. Okay, now one step back to the routing matrix. What I need to do is I need uh, to do the mapping of all voltage signals. So you see there on the left-hand side all the signals which I use in realism test. And these columns uh, show here the connection. So my three-phase uh, voltages are connected to the voltage input 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, and so on. I do that for the voltage, then for the current, and for my binary signals. So I have prepared that already. Then I can power up my digital twin. It's already running there. And now I want to show those on the screen. So on the left hand side my realism test file on the right hand side my digital twin application and you see uh, i need this api password so that's more or less the the interface to the digital twin i can get that from this menu if i select api password the digital twin generates a password which i need to copy and then to insert here in realism test. If that's done, I just continue. And then the well known test sequence is also calculating, uploading now to the, the cloud and injecting to the digital twin. Okay, it seems that I need to stop the simulation and run the digital twin again. So I stop now the, the simulation of the digital twin. Maybe Sebastian talked too much <laughs> in the meantime, <laughs> so that the, the digital twin slept. <laughs> okay, that takes some time. Let's do it again. Or maybe I also have some internet connection issues. That could also be. <laughs> It says no internet access. Yeah, maybe we have problems here in the in the studio today that we don't have internet access. So I have no connection to the cloud, I guess. So therefore I will restart my internet connection. I will connect again. I 
just try to reconnect. Okay, now I have internet connection again. Go to the camera first. Okay, we sorry uh, for the technical issues. Um, I have lost my internet connection and now I need to refresh my digital twin or to start up my digital twin again. So here we are back again. Uh, my digital twin is running and now I try 
to continue my, my test. So realism test is calculating the signals, uploading them to the cloud, and then executing with the digital twin. And now it works. You see circuit breaker one was closed and then opened. So we can also see that on the binary signals of the digital twin. So we also measure back the signals of the digital twin. And you see there was a trip signal coming here when I opened the circuit breaker one. So the relay tripped. Maybe one last, uh, test case, this fast mode. Um, I start the execution there. I reset the twin. you see the system with the circuit breaker one and three is closed and what happens now when i switch back oh no sorry the simulation was not stopped because i activated this iterative closed loop feature so that means we simulate the first injection then the digital twin responded uh, reacted on my signals we uh, read back these signals adapted our power system simulation and send it a, for a second or even a third time the, the test sequence. So you see it's still running there. And now it is finished. So let's go to the binary signals. You see what happened there. If I zoom in a little bit, You see there was a trip signal of circuit breaker one. So what we did in our simulation is really we first the circuit breaker was closed, then we automatically opened this circuit breaker and we closed then circuit breaker two. So that was a transfer from busbar one to busbar two and that in a quite fast time. If we look at this, uh, the circuit breaker two was closed here and circuit breaker one was opened there. These are now the signals uh, of the relay. I could also measure the auxiliary contacts of the circuit breakers to, to get there this time. Uh, I have the ability now also in relay synthesis to, to measure uh, these signals and then to assess them. I can do that after the tests. Yeah, you see with a digital twin, it worked. So maybe we did uh, something wrong in our wiring. Um, we need to double check that, sorry for the inconveniences. And yeah, that's everything we wanted to show. Uh, thanks for your attention. Sorry again for the inconveniences and the technical problems. We tried to fix them. And now please ask your questions. Uh, Sebastian. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's live. Sorry for it. Uh, we will fix that. But you saw we can test this in a hardware environmental and a, a closed loop environmental with hardware on 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 your uh, desk or in a virtual surrounding. So, and the advantage of the virtual surrounding is that we do not need to have the right hardware, the Omicrons on your table, and of course the wiring. We, we do a lot with the wiring yesterday and we test these frequently this morning. Yeah. Uh, everything works fine, but yeah, yeah, due to the fact that we have some technical issue this, this morning here also with the internet connection, we could not show that, but uh, later on, of course, we will fix that and we want to show that as well in the next uh, session. Um, 
Okay. See there are a lot of questions. Yeah, and we want to pick up some questions. We, I think, I think due to the time, we cannot answer every question. So that that means afterwards we will answer the question. Um, yeah, online. So that means we we write an answer and then in a written we, form. Yeah, in a written form, and we then you can get the answer from us. So, but of course we want to. Um, yeah. Um, pick up some questions. So the first question from SKP. Other manufacturer was using three-phase connection at all voltage inputs. However, in Zipotec 5 device, uh, having three-phase and two-phase voltage selection, how these how Siemens different from the algorithm based while using three uh, two-phase connection? That's right. Um, so our um, we we talk about the the voltage connection on the motor bus. So the the, the 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 advantage is if the customer is using uh, the three phase voltage we have um we have all the, the the three voltages available to measure the voltage on a motor bus therefore we can run a faster algorithm because we have more stable conditions instead of a single phase voltage input the face to face voltage input but we also offer the possibility um, to have a face-to-face -face voltage connection now with the 9.70 it is implemented especially for retrofit applications we saw that uh, sometimes we have only a face-to-face -face voltage on a motor bus so this is also pot possible that we can have a yeah, single phase um, voltage measurement on the motor bus but um, the the only change is then, of course, uh, the supervision function and as well the algorithm is a little bit different. Uh, that means uh, we can run the fast uh, mode in 10 milliseconds. Um, okay, then next question, GB. Um, yeah, GB, could you please mention the maximum time limit for each uh, switching mode? Um, yeah, this is... I think for the fast mode, it depends how fast is the voltage running down and also the frequency is running down on the motor bus. Um, and due to that, uh, the, the device or the algorithm is calculating the time uh, or the switching mode. So uh, we, we can provide uh, the fast mode in 10 milliseconds. Uh, for the real-time fast mode, I, um, I show these circle diagrams where we have the different uh, the different parts uh, of these circuit diagrams and this so uh, you, sh you can see due to the fact that the voltage and also the frequency is going down on the motor bus um, we get a yeah, bigger phase angle and especially with the real-time fast mode uh, we, we have a so-called uh, prediction calculation or prediction algorithm um, to give the close command in a certain time that we know okay when the circuit breaker is closed um, the voltage and the frequency and also the data angle is um, is in the expected range. So, and this is um, this is the uh, the advantages of the real time fast mode. Um, so, and uh, I can't give any 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 time. The time is uh, dependent on the voltage and also on the frequency on the motor bus. How yeah, in the end, how much inertia we have. So that means if we have bigger motors on the on the motor bus in the simulation, we will see that the voltage is, is decreasing slower. If we have only less motors or small motors, the voltage is decreasing faster than. Yeah. Next question. Um, go up. Yeah, thanks. SKP again. Is there any license required for Omicron? Yes. Um, I mean, for real sim test, um, as an offline version, it's free of charge. So you can download it from our website product uh, homepage. But to use real sim test in combination with the digital twin, you need an additional license, a digital twin license. You have to pay the license uh, per year annually and per user. So the same approach as Siemens uses for the Ziprotec digital twin license. So, of course, you also need a license uh, to get this Ziprotec uh, digital twin. Okay, next question goes to the hardware of Ziprotec 5. What are the numeric keypads, uh, keypads on the Ziprotec 5 for? So, you mean uh, 
these push buttons here in, in, in the front. I like that. I like that front very much because you can use that push buttons as well uh, to start or to block the HSBT system to trigger an manual start, for example, to trigger different start um, conditions here. Um, this this push buttons, um, yeah, provide the same functionality at as the um, yeah the function keys here on the on the base module. Um, but I think especially for the field crew or for the for the maintenance crew or during the commissioning, it's quite helpful to have these push buttons. You can block the HSBT, you can start the HSBT, for example. This is freely it can be yeah configured um, flexible and um, it's, it's really helpful to have these push buttons. You can select these in the configurator. You can uh, select or order a device with push buttons, without push buttons, key switches, and so on. Okay, there is an other question regarding Relisim test. Uh, with the Relisim test, can you simulate also both two network supply feeders as weak in order to understand how it behaves? The protection, yes, that's possible. So you can adapt the percentage of both infeeds from yeah, zero up to, uh, I think, 300%. That's possible. Then another question from GP. GP, is it possible to make offline tests in Realist Sim test? Yes, that's what I showed you. Uh, you can prepare your test cases, everything offline, but then you need a license if you want to inject the calculated signals with a CMC test kit or with a digital twin without test kits. Okay, I think we are a little bit over the time now. So that means we answer uh, the question all in a written form. Yeah. Say thank you to Florian. Thanks for the invitation again. Thank Sebastian. you. Thank you for the audience to stay on the line due to the technical problems. It was not really, really easy today. Um, but uh, finally, um, I hope we can give you a flavor how the testing, the dynamic testing is working with release and test. Thank you very much and see you. Bye-bye. See you. Bye. Thanks.